the big thing is he's actually set up down the street here. He set up a unit of, of, of DoD that's specifically um, assigned uh, to build, uh, you know, more bridges into the, especially the early stage companies in Silicon Valley. You know, Department of Defense 50 years ago was the first customer of all the new technology companies. Um, but over the last 25 years, uh, the Defense Department focused much more on, you know, the large federal, uh, you know, large federal contractors. Um, there's a much bigger focus from DoD now on working with early stage companies, and, and that's starting to work now. So, in your view, how can Silicon Valley help National Defense? Yeah, so, well, so I think national national defense has become synonymous with with te technology, with te technological sophistication. Um, cybersecurity is a perfect example of that. But even conventional warfare is now, you know, heavily influenced, and and uh, it, you know, the future of it is being heavily shaped by by new technology. And so, at least my belief is, early stage companies and new technologies can play a fundamental role in national defense. And I know Secretary Carter certainly believes that. What's your ask from Secretary Carter? What's your number yeah. one? Ask? Well, so the, the the big thing is uh, a tech startup is the smallest high performance organization in the world. DoD is the largest largest <laughs> high performance organization in the world and so it's very hard there's no natural fit between organizations that small and that big and so developing you know pathways where young companies can engage and can get results in a time frame that makes sense for young companies um, and where DOD can get the benefit of the new thinking and the new technologies you know without fundamentally changing how it does procurement but have, having a way to basically get involved early um, is really really critical and that's what this new unit out here is, is, is set up to do. What's the biggest risk? to our cybersecurity right now? I mean, are we being outspent by other governments, other private sectors, China? Yeah, well, so the biggest risk, I would say um, uh, two things. One is just we're not used to defending against nation states. Um, you know, 20 years ago, defenses were all against, you know, literally teenage kids, right? Uh, 10 years ago, defenses were against organized crime, uh, criminal gangs, and now the defenses are against nation states. And so the, the threat profile has changed um, dramatically. Um, and then cybersecurity, like other kinds of security, it's inherently asymmetrical, right? So the defender has to be correct 100% of the time, but the attacker only the attack only needs to work once. Um, and so defense is always going to be a bigger challenge than attack. And so if you make the attacks more sophisticated, the defense has to get much more sophisticated. Um, and I think we as an industry are still in the process, frankly, of catching up to that. Mark Zuckerberg called U.S. surveillance the biggest threat to the Internet. What do you think? So I think, uh, I will comment on that specifically, <laughs> and I would, never, I would never contradict Mark in anything he says. Um, I think there's an issue globally. I think the reality is every country in the world either does the kind of surveillance that it turns out, you know, the, the Snowden uh, revelations have shown the U.S. does. Every other country either does all that or wishes they could and is trying to figure out how to do it. Um, and so this is an issue in every single country around the world. Um, and then if you're a company, uh, and if you're a U.S. company or another, another international technology company, you're trying to operate globally, you have to figure out how to operate in a world in which every country is either doing this or trying to do it. And so it's, it's become a very complicated and messy situation. Cybersecurity has become such a crowded space. There are so many companies. They're very, very niche. Do you think we're, we're in a cybersecurity bubble? I mean, oh. a, a, do you think some of these valuations are unsustainable? Because I was speaking with the Tanium co-founder earlier who said, I think a lot of these companies are not going to be around. Well, we certainly placed our vote on Tanium, so I would, I, I'm completely in favor of Tanium dominating the entire field. Um, I would just tell you, like, look, we're living in we're living in an online world. We're living in an on online world where we're all going to have connected devices around us all the time. I mean, the fact that we now have this new topic of how to protect cars from cyber hacking, like, that's a brand new thing. And so there's going to be a new generation of companies that just do that.